Welcome to the Polgar Chess University. In this lesson, we learn about defense and also the priorities of what's important in different situations. In general, the order of priorities is checkmate, better you give it or get it. Second of all, the material balance, capturing pieces or making sure your own pieces don't get captured. And only thirdly, you worry about the general things such as developing your pieces or focusing on the center or not doubling up your pawns or all these elements that you read or hear about that are obviously important but not on the cost of the previous two. So remember, checkmate first, material or pieces, and only if none of those are in the picture, that's when you worry about the little things. So let's see this first example, and we're going to focus on these type of situations for the rest of the lesson. When there is a white queen on h6, right around the black king, in assistance with a pawn on f6. So in this situation, we need to notice what's important about the position. And at the end of the day, the only thing that matters right now, that white's threat, queen to g7, which would be a checkmate, doesn't happen. Because if that happens, then it's game over, checkmate. So in this position, black needs to look for a way to either protect that very square, the g7 square, with one of his pieces, or distract the white queen in a way that it will have to be distracted and will not go to g7 to checkmate, or get rid of the pawn on f6, the assistant, because if indeed that pawn on f6 would be gone without that pawn on f6, of course there would be no checkmate. The black king could capture the white queen on g7. So, in this case, black can defend in a simple and natural way by guarding the g7 square. Now, if you look, certain pieces certainly cannot come to our assistance. For example, the pawns, as they don't move backwards nor sideways. Given the situation that the black king is where it is on g8, neither can the black rook. So therefore, with the method of elimination, we quickly came to the conclusion that it must be, if at all, any piece, the queen that can guard the g7 square. And that simple defensive move is moving the queen to f8. So now what happens is, if the white queen moves to g7 still to check the black king, the black queen will capture it and after the pawn captures, it was a trade of queens. And now, at the end of the day, black even would win a pawn. Of course, understanding that, after the queen f8 move, white is certainly not forced to move his queen to g7 and can either trade queens right away on f8 or retreat the queen. And then the game goes on, but the checkmate threat is over. Let's see another situation. Right, here we are. In this situation, compared to the previous one, black gained an extra knight. Black has a knight on c5. However, if you look carefully, you will notice that that very knight is in the queen's way. So right now, the black queen is unable to retreat to f8 as it did in the previous position. However, since black has an extra piece, let's see if we can try to use that knight to defend the g7 square. Try to see if you can find a square where that knight needs to jump to in order to be ready for the queen g7 move. And indeed, that move is knight to e6. Now again, if queen g7, white would lose the queen for no compensation. 
So black is just fine right now. Now let's see another situation where even though black has number of options to guard that key G7 square, only one of them do the job. Learning from the previous two examples, we know that one option is to play Queen F8. Another option would be to move the knight back to E6, like we've seen in the last example. Or there is a third option, and that is to move the knight to F5. Now here is another very important element that if the defending piece, like for example here on f5, could be captured, that would be removing the guard. And black would be giving up a knight for no particular reasons, still being faced with the same problem, the threat of the checkmate on g7. At this stage, black wouldn't have the time to capture white's bishop on f5, and would be forced to move now the queen back to f8. Of course, there is no reason to delay that. Black should do that right away. Queen f8 saves the day, no loss of knight, and neither can white checkmate. Moving the knight to e6 would be also inferior for the same reason that now the white bishop would be ready to capture the knight and win a knight for free. Going back just for a moment to the very beginning and uh, talking about the knight f5 move, I would like to point out that if white would try now to capture with the rook instead of the bishop, that would not be equally good. In fact, it would be a humongous mistake because it would leave the back rank unprotected and black would be ready to move down either the rook to e1 or the queen to a1. Either one would result in checkmate within a couple of moves, rook e1 being the more accurate one. Let's move on to yet another similar example, but with different patterns. So we know the threat, nothing changed. The white queen is about to move to g7. What to do? We cannot guard that square easily. The black bishop is too far away from f8. So is the black queen. Try to take a few minutes and try to come to the correct answer on your own before you listen further. Now, if black would make a tricky move, for example, queen f2, that would work lovely if the rook would capture it, because again we would result in a back rank checkmate situation after the black rook swings down to e1 and after rook blocks, rook captures, checkmate. What's important to understand in such situations, like after queen f2, when you offer the queen for the opponent to capture, that the opponent by no mean is forced to do what you would like him or her to do. White should focus on what they are doing in this case, and that is give the checkmate. Let's go back again and try to see what can we do. When we're dealing with such desperate situations, when the game is on the line, you shouldn't worry about thinking, considering even extreme moves, such as giving your queen up. For example, in this case, you should certainly consider the move queen captures pawn on f6. Normally, this would be a horrendous move because the white rook on f1 can capture the black queen which is still certainly better than getting checkmated. However, in this case, it's much better than that, because after rook would capture the queen, the black rook would be ready to come down to e1, check, and again, the already known checkmate is in front of us again. White can only block the check with the rook and delay the checkmate by one move, and it's game over for white. Naturally, after queen captures f6, 
White by no means is forced to capture the black queen. However, if they don't, black also achieves something very important. First of all, won a pawn, but even a lot more importantly, avoided the checkmate on g7. Let's move on to the next example. Here we go. In this position, again it is black's turn and black needs to look for a way to avoid getting checkmated and preferably without any loss of material. For example, in this case, queen captures pawn on f6 would be a horrendous mistake because it would give up the queen without any need. There is a better option. And remember, there is no more back rank checkmate. The white king now is on h2, so it's certainly in no danger of getting checkmated. Here, black has a two-move operation to get to guard the g7 square. What's important is to make sure that white will be busy and won't be able to play queen g7 in the meantime. You can notice a difference compared to some of the other positions we saw. That black now has a pawn on c5 and therefore the black bishop cannot jump over it and move to f8. The goal right now is to get either the bishop or the queen to f8 to prepare for queen g7. Fortunately for black, if they do find the correct check on the first move, then they'll succeed. Black has three checks at his disposal on b8, c7, and d6. Can you guess which one is the correct one? Well, actually, you shouldn't guess, but you should figure out why, which one will enable the queen then on the next move to move to f8. And the correct answer is moving the queen to d6 check. So in the meantime, white is busy either moving the king out of the check or blocking it. And regardless which white chooses, the black queen is ready to defend on f8. And again, black maintains the significant material advantage. Let's see the next example. Here we are. Right now, as usual, white is threatening to checkmate on g7. What can black do? The queen now is unable to go to d6 to check white's king and then to get to f8. Neither can it go to f8 right away. Neither can the black bishop get there. So at the end of the day, what can, what should black do? This is a new element that we're learning for the first time of all these positions. In this case, black needs to pull away the threatening hand of the white queen on h6. And here is how to achieve that. Queen c7 check. In the meantime, let's make sure we give checks, keeping the opponent busy. The good news is, if the white king moves out of the check, for example to the corner, the black queen is ready to come to c1, checking again, and at the same time attacking white's queen. Therefore, white pretty much must trade queens, and that means black achieved the goal. The attacking queen is gone, without any loss of material. But you may wonder, after black's first check with queen c7, what if white blocks the check? Well, then you simply have to be persistent and play queen c2 check. And at this point, white has no choice but move down to the first rank and then black is ready again to exchange queens with queen c1. See, this is another pattern that you can use to escape. Let's see yet another idea. Here we are. We can see that black again has tremendous material advantage, having an extra rook, knight, and pawn. Generally speaking, that's a winning advantage, certainly. In this case, unless black finds the correct continuation, black may still lose, because a checkmate trumps it all. 
In this case, black is unable to use the queen to get to f8, or to exchange the queens, or to capture the pawn from f6. However, we have a new participant compared to all the examples we saw so far. And therefore, that very knight becomes the star. That knight is again able to give an intermediate check and then get to a position where it will control the g7 square. And that very move is knight to g3 and regardless where the king goes, the knight can get to h5 and guard the g7 square. At the same time, the knight is also attacking the pawn on f6. So, for example, if white would chase the knight, trying, hoping that the knight would get away from the g7 square, it certainly would, but at the same time, eat the pawn on f6, and now, of course, there is no more support to the g7 square to checkmate. Let's move on. Here we go. Whoa, no knight. What to do now? Now black is in trouble finally, is aren't they? Well, almost. But luckily for black, they do have a few well-placed checks at their disposal that can actually win the game. This is one of those examples when the weaker side is not defending, but immediately turns to counterattack. A typical advice is that when you seem to be in real trouble, look around, see if you have any effective checks or captures to your defense or counterattack. Like in this case, black plays rook to d1 check, giving white only one option, and then immediately the queen can either move to b8 and then to f8 after the check, or even better, move the queen to c7 when white is getting into a serious problem, have to block the check, and then the white king is the one that gets into trouble first. So there are, of course, many situations in chess when both sides are almost checkmating. Obviously, Whichever side arrives first wins the game. And here is our next example. What do we see here? Black no longer has the pawn on g6, and if they would have it, they would be in serious trouble. And thanks to the fact that the g6 pawn is gone, black can save the game. That was, of course, a serious hint. Why? Because, if you can envision... The black queen, if it can get to g6, it would certainly guard the g7 square. Or, if the black queen could get to g3, that would work too. So let's see how that works. How can black get somewhere to the g file? Again, it's important to use the intermediate check, which starts with queen b1, and after king gets out of the check, voila, the queen has just arrived on time, and white's attack is over. The next example will be rather different than what we saw so far. In this position, white, in addition to threatening checkmate on g7, also has three extra pawns. So the situation is a bit different, because in this case, even guarding the g7 square by playing queen to f8 and offering the exchange of the queens would not help black because white would happily exchange those queens and then start pushing the past pawns. So what to do? Well, there are two other type of ways to save a game. If you cannot maintain the material balance, two other options are either to try to give perpetual checks or to try to save the game with stalemate. Of course, stalemate usually happens only in the endgame, but that's where we are, within a queen and pawn endgame, and that's exactly the theme we're seeing right here. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the black king has no legal moves at the moment, and neither do the two blocked pawns on f7 and g6. 
So the only thing in the way of stalemate is the black queen in the corner. So if black could forcefully get rid of that queen, the game would be drawn immediately. So the best and simplest move right now is to give up that queen happily and freely, forcing white to capture it, and voila, black escaped with a draw, with stalemate. A beautiful escape, and it's also, of course, a reminder that no matter how good, how winning your position seems, look out for your opponent traps, because there's nothing more painful when you play a beautiful game you gain a significant advantage, like here, three pawns, and yet your opponent escapes because of your carelessness of forgetting about stalemate. Let's see another scenario where black escapes with the help of perpetual check. In this case, the checkmate threat is there, and even if the black knight would get to h5 and guard that square, the position would be still lost for black. However, black can check on g3, forcing the king to h2 as the black bishop is guarding the g1 square, and then all black needs to do is go back and forth. Knight f1, king h1, knight g3, king h2, and knight f1, and just keep repeating until you reach the very same position three times. And here is our final example for the lesson. In this position, again, the threat is the checkmate, and hopefully you can figure out the simple answer here. We already dealt with such a situation, so I'll give you 15 seconds. Which one is it? Are we guarding the square? Are we getting rid of the f6 pawn? Are we trading queens? Are we counterattacking? And the answer is... We are trading queens. The simple move is queen c1, check. And now white has no option but to trade queens, and that will leave black with material advantage having a knight. After seeing all these examples, I think you'll be ready with the ideas on what you need to look for in order to defend against your opponent's attack. And often, actually, you can anticipate it and be ready and lure your opponent into an unhealthy attack and sacrifices that your opponent may think that the attack works, but you are ready with all the defensive skills and can get some nice wins like that. It's fun to win, even with counterattack or defense. Attacks don't always work. Thank you so much for listening. So long until next week.